and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I am so excited to finally be able to share this video with you. I want to introduce my six sheet card challenge where you can create 16 cards using just six sheets of pattern paper. It's been a work in progress for several months and I've finally finished it. I've created a cutting template for each of the six sheets of paper along with 15 card sketches that are color coded to show where each of the pieces go. This card challenge template is free and is available on my website as you see here. It will also be linked in the description box below for you to download. Now this is a quarterly card making challenge that you can enter by creating cards of your own using this free download and you can also win some prizes which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. So let me explain how this works. You will take six sheets of pattern paper and cut them using the cutting templates that were just shown. These are the first six card sketches. Each color represents the corresponding paper, so you'll want to pick paper that coordinates with each other. Double-sided paper works best, but you can also use one-sided and just cut out the pattern twice. Now these are the next six card sketches, and as you can see, there are some gray areas, and that would just be matching colored cardstock. And then finally, here are the last three. The template includes instructions on how you would cut each of these and what to do. Now let's go over the prizes. There will be three prizes for this first challenge. The first prize is a mystery box full of card making supplies valued at over $50. And this includes stamps, stencils, embellishments, and much more. The second prize is a $25 gift certificate to scrapbook.com. And the third prize is a mystery stamp and die bundle valued at over $20. To enter the quarterly card challenge, download the PDF file and create your own cards using the templates and your choice of pattern paper. They can be any color and any theme using any sentiments that you'd like. Now this challenge is open to card makers worldwide. So what you would do is upload pictures of your card creations on social media and use the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 1. Now this can be on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or Pinterest, or all of them, so that I can find your entries. One set of 16 cards counts as one entry, and you can enter up to three times per quarter. Now after the challenge ends, which would be March 31st, 2021 for this first challenge, I will gather all of the entries and randomly select the three winners. I will announce the winners on my YouTube channel, so make sure you're a subscriber. If you would like for me to showcase your cards on my YouTube channel and my other social media sites, tag me on Instagram, Pinterest, or YouTube at Cards by Kendra or on Facebook at Cards by Kendra Morgan. This part is not required to enter the quarterly challenge. However, by tagging me and using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 1 in the same post, you agree to have your work shared, which will both help get your work noticed and grow your social media channels as well. I went ahead and printed out the template for this card challenge. This is the cutting template for paper one and two. And then here are the cutting templates for papers three and four. And the gray areas, those are two little tiny sections that will not be used. So there will be some scraps, but other than that, all of them will be used. And this makes a total of 16 cards. So let me show you how this works with the card sketches. So this is the first set of six and the tall yellow piece here from sketch number one it's numbered so you'll be able to put all of the different um, pieces into different stacks for each of the cards so the yellow and the pink that would be pattern paper one and four those will create cards one and two and then for card sketch number three it will be from pattern paper one and three and so forth so i'm Sure, you can figure this out since it's all color coded. Now for the fifth card sketch, they are one inch squares. Um, now this is the second set of six. So it really works best with non-directional paper because as you can see, some of the cutting templates are turned. So if you have things like hearts that need to be straight up and down, um, you have to take that into consideration. So it's best to use non directional pattern paper. For this particular card sketch, you'll notice how there's two different shades of pink. That's because it was designed for double-sided paper. So for this last card sketch on this page, 
this makes two different cards so when you cut that diagonally you'll be able to make two different cards out of that and then here are the last three card sketches um, mainly pulling from the green and the purple so again here you've got two different shades of purple um, designed for double-sided paper but you can just cut an additional sheet and then you'll be able to make additional cards now this does include the instructions on what to do with each of the card card templates and what I like to do is go ahead and cut all of my card bases and have those ready so that whenever I am sorting out my pattern paper, I can just put them inside and then I'll be able to make them um, later. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and show you some of the cards that I've made previously, even though I didn't record the process. This is my card sketch number one, and I used the Pink and Mains Crafty Courtyard kit from December of 2020 called Warm Wishes. This is the card I made using card sketch number two, and I changed this up a little bit. Rather than having some white card stock, I used some of the pink polka dotted embossed paper that came in the kit. Um, this is card sketch number three, and this one has some um, some little snowflakes that, are, that I stamped on there. It says, Thoughts of You Warm My Heart. And then for the fourth card sketch, rather than using that two inch circle, I decided to use the snowflake die that came in the kit. So I cut out a die cut and put that on there instead. And that one just says hello. And then for card sketch number five, I used different polka dotted sheets, uh, their little one inch squares with frames, and then also included some stripes in there. And I used some of the twine that came in the kit for the bow and then for card sketch number six i just used the opposite side of that polka the larger polka dot paper and this snowman doesn't actually come with the crafty courtyard kit that was a different stamp from another company but um, i thought it was cute to go with those snowflakes so let me show you the next set of six cards okay so i used the um, fake glitter paper i guess that's what you call it it's an ombre look i um, used those for stripes and then put the polka dot pieces in between and then here is card sketch number seven and this has got a lot of layers on it so it's got a lot of different colors going on there but i think it's really cute and then card sketch number eight this has got um, actually watermark snowflakes which i don't think you can really see them very well in the video but they're there and it's really cute and I made these little banners too out of the, the tiny strips um, and I just love that scarf stamp okay so here's card sketch number <laughs> I think it's number 10 and notice how I put the snowflake over the three sheets so I added something to that one and then here is the next one and uh, the top half has that um, embossed polka dotted pink paper and I just I think this one's super cute too okay so this is the one that makes the two cards so I made two exact cards and I accidentally cut this one backwards no actually what I did was I cut it and then I decided I like the other side better so that's why it's a different direction than the card sketch Okay, so for card sketch number 13, um, I think these three are my favorite out of the whole bunch, but um, I really like those boots, and so I wanted to put those mainly on the white area, and so I just stamped the Happy Winter directly on there, and then this is card sketch number 14, and here I've popped that little, um, I guess, cat hat <laughs> on top, and then this is the last card sketch number 15. And I really um, think that those mittens are super cute. So here are all 16 of the cards that I've made so far. So now let me show you the process. These are the pattern papers that came in the kit that I have not used yet. And I'm gonna sort through these and just, um, just kind of show you what I've got to work with. And this is a great pattern paper set because all of these are non-directional. So um, I definitely love the polka dots and the plaid, um, but I'm trying to use ones that I haven't used before. Now all of these that have the sweater pattern on them, there's a teal one, 
there's a purple one and then a pink one so I'm gonna set all of those aside so that I can cut out some some die cuts using the die cuts that came with the stamp set so rather than stamping the little boots and mittens I'm gonna just use the die cuts I just love the colors in this pattern paper they all coordinate really well and I think this chevron piece is my favorite um, there's some big polka dots some little polka dots um, and then this fake glitter paper I'm gonna call it fake glitter paper because I don't really know what to call it there's two different shades there's one that's an ombre from teal to lime green and then this pink one here so it goes from like a dark pink to a light pink so like I said before I'm gonna set all of the sweater looking papers aside and then I'm gonna pick out six more sheets so that I can um, label them as papers one through six so then I'll know what to cut so here's the die set that I actually am gonna be cutting these out of and I um, for, for the sake of time I'm not gonna show you the process of how I did this but I will be using those on, on some of the cards that I make um, so I'm gonna use one sheet of this ombre paper and then because I didn't use this sheet before I don't really know what this patterns called I definitely want to use those two since I don't have them in my other cards and then I'm just gonna pick up pick out some favorites from what I used before so now that I have my six sheets I'm going to decide which paper I want to go with which template and so now that I've basically put them in order now I'm gonna show okay, you so how to with cut paper them one I um, am looking at the card sketch to see which direction that longest rectangle is going to be for my card sketch number one and because this paper is kind of sort of directional I want to make sure I cut off that one inch portion from the very bottom because I want that ombre look from dark to light going from top to, top to bottom and so here I'm just going to cut off at two and three fourths and that's going to be my long piece and then here this is going to be the piece on the left hand side of the sketch that is three and a quarter by three and three quarter and I do need to replace my blade so that's why you see me trying to wipe away those little pieces of paper that um, when you have a dull blade you know how that is so here I'm just cutting off those last two one inch squares and then I'll have this ready and then it'll be time to move on to paper number two now with this one it's non-directional so I don't really have to worry about you know which way I cut it but I do want to make sure that the papers that I'm going to be putting with it are going to coordinate. So um, I've got this plaid paper here that looks like it's got all of the different colors so that will coordinate with any of them but the other side is just pink and polka dot. So um, first thing I do is I cut off that right hand strip and then cut all of those small pieces and then I will cut down the left hand side and I'm going to speed up this whole process. Okay, now moving on to paper number three. Because most of this sheet is being cut down into smaller strips, with the exception of that one big piece in the top left corner, I'm gonna be um, picking up a, a piece of paper that's got a smaller pattern on it. So again, I'm gonna start by cutting off that right-hand side and then, um, then cutting down the small strips on the left-hand side. Now I did want to mention that there is a little section you see that piece that I just cut off there it's an eighth of an inch the right hand side those vertical pieces are designed to be three and three quarter inches long so that needed to be cut off so that will be scraps that you can throw away or you can find a use for it okay so paper number four has the most cutting and I really love the stripes so I want to make sure that when I cut these stripes that the stripes are vertical on that horizontal long piece there at the top and so that's why I'm going to be cutting off the right hand side that little um, half inch strip first and then I'll be able to turn my paper um, and get the one inch piece that's going to go on card sketch number two. and I've taken that little half inch strip that I've already cut off and I'm cutting it 
down the middle so that I can have my two half inch strips for card number nine. And then um, this next part, I'm going to cut the right hand side, which is right next to those little half inch strips. So I'm making this one and three quarter inches wide. And I actually mess up here because on my um, PDF file, for some reason I had a three and three quarter inch measurement in there and it didn't need to be there. So I, I kind of screwed up my little squares here. So I ended up having to cut some scraps from another piece to fix just those little two inch squares. But it wasn't, it didn't like totally ruin everything. But as you can see there, I'm like, what did I do? I totally messed this up but it, it should have been cut to three inches rather than three and three quarter inches. So that's what happened. So anyway, now back to the left-hand side. And again, I mentioned earlier, the little gray pieces on this sketch, those are gonna be scraps. So I cut off that bottom left-hand piece, and now I'm gonna be cutting off the far left-hand rectangle and then trimming off that end that scraps and then cutting the piece that goes above that bottom left hand horizontal strip and then all of the other smaller strips. Now because I messed up on the cutting and I cut this rectangle piece to three and three quarters rather than just three inches, I fixed that and then I had to bring in another little scrap so that I can fix these two that were supposed to be one inch squares. So I, br I brought in a scrap from the last set of cards that I made and I'm just gonna be cutting two of the one inch squares from that. So I'm gonna set this aside and then trim these, trim the scrap down and that, that way I'll put it in this stack so I know whenever I'm sorting this out what okay, I'll be doing with Moving on to paper that. number five. And apparently there's I have um, only a few pieces <laughs> on this, everything. so this one is very easy to cut. Um, start out by cutting the far left hand side and then that bottom piece, even though you're cutting off a two inch square, you'll end up just kind of snipping off the bottom to make that a banner. And now for um, this side, you'll want to make sure that you cut off that bottom three quarter inch rectangle. And then you'll put this at an angle and make sure that each of the corners are in your cutting line. And you can cut it either way from left to right or right to left. And then moving on to paper number six, this one's pretty straightforward. You pretty much want to cut off that top piece and then um, the two bottom piece. But here I'm just trying to figure out which way I want the ombre to go um, because this one, this one is a directional again, if I want to show the ombre anyway. So um, I'm gonna cut off that very top piece so that it's the darker of the the blue colors and then i'll have that bottom be more of a lime green now that i have all of my papers cut down i want to show you this really cool tool that i bought about 15 years ago this is the zutter dream cuts paper cutter and this is how i make all of my card bases and this goes super fast whenever i'm trying to make them in bulk you can put sheets of cardstock up to 12 inches wide and it will cut it directly in half and so those little black sliders you can slide to really put any size up to 12 inches in there so you can make them top folding cards or you can make them side folding cards and here i'm just making a few of each because all of my card sketches you know i've got several um of the side folding and then that little top slot will allow you to cut papers into thirds which is really cool so here i am just scoring each of my card bases and now i like to put them in the, the corner of my paper cutting scoring board so that the, the pieces bottom flaps line up as to which card sketch that it goes with and normally i would do this on a table so that i could lay out all 15 of my card bases but here i'm just gonna do a few at a time and I'm sorting out each of the papers that I've already cut and I'm putting them with the card base that they go with.
Now that all the pieces have been sorted with their cards, I'm gonna go through each of the cards and decide which side of the double-sided pattern paper I wanna use, and then find some matching colored cardstock. As you can see, I've got a bunch of different scraps and different colors that match the sheets that I'm using. And once I find all of the frames, then I'll be able to add the different embellishments and shapes and other things that I'm going to be adding to the cards. So I'm not going to record this entire process. I'm just going to show you kind of my thought process with this first one here and pick some colors that go with these pattern papers. So um, once I have all of my frames cut, then I'll be able to go through and decide what stamps I want to use or what die cuts I want to use. So here are all of my cards with the frames. And then my next step is to go through and figure out what I want to embellish and stamp with. So here are the remaining sheets of pattern paper that I haven't used, so I'll set those aside and make some cards with those later. Now, after cutting out the frames, I did end up using some of my word dies to cut out some sentiments. So some of the cards will have um, word dies and others will be stamped on but I just cut out a bunch of different ones that I'll be able to kind of sort through and pick from once I'm going through each of the cards to decide um, what I want them to say and I did cut out a bunch of snowflakes to go along with my little sweater pieces so I want to share a tip with you I've cut out some smaller frames and then as you can see I also cut out some of the words and um, it definitely helps to make your cardstock go further. So I'll just kind of show you my process as I'm going through each of the cards. And then I'll be putting them in these plastic sleeves so that I can glue them all together later. Some of the cards were a little difficult to figure out what I wanted to put on them because they weren't fully put together yet, so I just set those aside. Now I did have a sticker book that has some stickers in it that matches this pattern paper, and I end up pulling that in for some of these cards. It's a sticker book I bought from Hobby Lobby for like $5, and it has hundreds of stickers in it. So I just cut whatever sticker I wanted to use, and I put that in the sleeve. For the cards that I'm using, these sweater cutout die cuts, I am actually gonna use the stamp set that came with the kit. And so I'm gonna set those in a different stack so I know that I need to stamp on those later. Now these are the, this particular card is the one that I needed to make the little banners out of. So I'm just trying to decide which side of the paper I wanna use, and then I'll cut the little ends off to make them be banners later. This card sketch number 10 actually calls for a circle with a scalloped frame. And so I first tried to use some of my word die cuts on there and I just wasn't feeling it. So I decided to use my paper punch and cut out the frame with the scallop. And then um, I'm gonna be stamping on the white circle that I cut out with my two inch punch. For card sketch 11, I'm using some snowflakes and I'm leaving the top portion so that I can stamp on it. And for card sketch number 12, this is the one that makes two cards. Um, the card sketch calls for a two inch circle, so I went ahead and cut those out and I'm gonna be stamping on those. For card sketch 13, this is the one that calls for the little banner there. I just thought it took away from the card, so I just decided not to use it. I had cut out the, the blue and the lime green 
matching colored cardstock using a scallop die and I thought that was pretty so I just left it alone kept it as is now this one here this one is kind of plain for now but you'll see that I embellish it later with some sequins and I just stamped the word hello on that little white piece Even though this doesn't have anything to do with the card sketches, I wanted to show you how I can make additional cards using the cover paper from the paper pad. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting off the portions that don't have any words on there and I'm going to use these two strips to make two additional cards. I'm also using the postcard that came in the kit. The back side has the color palette and the contents of the kit. So here I'm just taking my one and three quarter inch punch and I'm cutting these circles out and then I'll be using these pieces with those strips that I just cut out. Now it's time to do my assembly, which I'm gonna do off camera and I will show you the finished results. Here is card sketch number one. I did add some sequins and some of the glitter bling stickers that came in the kit. This is card sketch number two and I kept this one pretty simple. I just added a matching purple bling glitter sticker at the top right hand corner. This is card sketch number three and I added a cupcake sticker to this one. This is card sketch number four and here you can see that I didn't add that two inch circle. I just added one of those word die cuts. And then this is card sketch number four. Here's where I added some of the baker's twine that came in the kit. And then card sketch number six. <laughs> Sorry, I'm keep trying to keep track of the numbers. Card sketch number six. I didn't have frames on any of these and I think that turned out really pretty. So um, here's card sketch number seven. And this one is where I added that cupcake. I did pop these up with using some 3D foam squares. This is the next card sketch, um, this is where I added those sweater die cuts. And then the next one, this is where I ended up, I ended up using just all teal on this one. I think in the previous section of the video, I had some colorful banners, but I ended up liking the all teal ones. Now I did end up turning this particular card sketch around and made it um, portrait instead of landscape. And then here I actually glued that one on the wrong side, but that's okay. And then for card sketch number 12, this is the one that makes two cards. I added some sequins just to bling that up a little bit. Okay, and then here is the card sketch number 13 where I decided not to use the banner part, but I did add some bling stickers in both that teal color and the lime green. And I thought that turned out really pretty. And then here's card sketch number 14. And as you can see, I added a bunch of bling stickers to this. And then for the last one, I added a bunch of sequins. And I really, really like this one. I love those two colors together. I went ahead and used up the rest of that pattern paper that I had left over. I don't like to have a bunch of scraps laying around. I'm one of those people that like to use up everything in a kit. So I just wanted to share these cards with you. Um, some of them I use some stamps from some stamp sets that I've had for a while that I haven't used. This is from Simon Says Stamp and the Greeting Farm from their stamp, stamp Timber sale a while back and I hadn't used it. And of course I had to incorporate some hearts. We do have Valentine's Day coming up soon. Um, and this is a happy birthday die that I used from Stampin' Up. I did have some scraps so I was trying to use those up and um so i've used those little one inch strips on the top and bottom of that one and this i used the full panel now the back side was one of those sweater paper pieces um or pieces of paper that i didn't end up using so here's my favorite the chevron i just love the little cupcakes and cakes that came in that stamp set and i used some copic markers to color those and then here are the ones that i glued together using the postcard and the front cover of the pattern paper and I added some twine to this one here, and then this one I just added some bling to it. 
And so here's another card that I made using one of the sketches. I just turned it the other way. And then I also made another card like the one, card sketch number 13, where I didn't end up using the banner. I just love those scallop dies, those scallop rectangle dies. And then here's where I'm using up some of those two inch strip pieces just along the whole front of the card. Here's another one that's similar to card sketch number six, using up some of those scraps. I made one more card and I'll be sharing the video on how I made this card on my YouTube channel soon. So make sure you subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Here are all 50 cards. It was definitely difficult trying to get all 50 cards in one picture. Here is the first set of 16 cards that I made using the six sheet card challenge template. This is the second set of 16 cards. And then these are the cards that I made with the leftover pieces of paper and scraps. I really hope you've liked this video. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. I also hope that you will consider entering my card challenge so you can win some prizes. You can find my work on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, and also my website at cardsbykendra.com. Thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.